This is another video brought to you by The Ichiban Productions. Like, comment, subscribe. So welcome everyone. Happy days are here again. We're back again with a new unboxing and review. This time looking at the PC Engine Core Graphics Mini Console. I'm going to be up front with you guys. I never had one of these as a child, so I have absolutely no nostalgic factor over this bad boy. I had myself a Nintendo and a Super Nintendo. That's what young Ichiban was playing on, but he never had the chance to play on the PC engine. So if you're looking for a review that's going to gush over the nostalgia factor of this console... This one is definitely not for you. If you're looking for the everyday, regular, normal guy letting you know, should you buy this console if you don't have that nostalgia goggles on or whether you should pass upon it, this is exactly what you need to watch. So I've done a bit of research on this console and I was blown away to find out that they have released three versions of this. But this represents what they released to the market in 1989. So there were three versions of this. You got the PC Core Graphics, which is a European exclusive. If you went over to Japan, it was just called the PC Engine Mini and came in a sort of a Nintendo gray instead of this dark gray. And over in America, they're the Turbo Graphics 16. So there were loads of different consoles. They all generally did the same thing from what I can understand. They just all looked different. So depending on where you were in the world, you got a slightly different version of this. The plan now is to take you through the journey of the unboxing, the first impressions and then a review because we have to do a review on this bad boy. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know a huge amount about this. I've read some reviews. I've seen some YouTube reviews, um, but I was just excited because I love mini consoles. I've got the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo. I've got myself the Mega Drive and the dreaded. Uh, PlayStation Classic, which actually was pretty good with them sticks that we not probably shouldn't talk about on the channel, but they were really, really good. So I'm quite excited to open it, see what it's got to offer, and it's a fresh eyes. I think in this day and age, with the remakes and the retro comebacks of everything, it's really nice to experience and to be able to experience something for the very first time. So stick along, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Just before we actually rip it open and see what's inside and check the box out, it's worth noting that this is an Amazon exclusive. You're not going to be getting it from Game or any other retailer like that. It's Amazon exclusive and it keeps going in stock and out of stock. I was fortunate enough to catch this at a time when it was in stock. I think the RRP is $99.99. When I got it, it was £87 and they did the five monthly payment for it. And you know what I think about those five monthly payments. Mwah beautiful so i pressed it it came next day that's enough talking let's check out the box looking at the front we're met with this beautiful design of console it's very minimalistic as i suppose was the fashion back in the day got the logo on there we got the japanese on there can't read that so not got a clue what it says i guess this is what's included in it no idea what that is but i know what a hdmi is and Micro USB, not USB-C. Oh, it's not a good start. But, you know, let's not judge it too harshly to start with. What we got on the side, we've got more logos and stuff like that. On the other side, we've got the Amazon business and the logos. The bottom, we've got all the cautions. Oh, we can actually see what's in it now. The PC engine, the controller, a HDMI cable, USB cable, and instructions manuals. It's pretty good that it comes with a HDMI cable, as I've seen this terrible idea and this terrible habit of a lot of people not including HDMI cables anymore, which I think is a cheek. Yeah, I know, we've all got HDMI cables, but damn it, if I'm buying this, and I'm buying it new, I want that HDMI cable. Links to Konami, they're the guys that have published it. Let's check out the back. So this has an absolute plethora of games on there. Um... Hopefully, if I pull it forward, you can hopefully see. Not a lot of those mean a lot to me. I do recognise a few of them, but not all of them. Bomber Man, the hours I used to waste playing that game is unbelievable, so I'll be interested to see what that is. We've got the Turbo Graph, si Graph X, 16 games too. Uh, so that was sort of like the upgraded version of it, I would expect. Bomber Man 93, I like double Bomber Man. What more could anybody ask for? So we've got the warnings on the bottom. What it should be and shouldn't be played by. 12, you better turn. If you're 12 years old, you better turn this off right now. But no, stick along, it's going to be great. Uh, featured games are in Japanese. So that's one thing I did here, is not all of these are in English. So if you're one of those people that cannot stand games in different languages, this might not be for you. Quite a selection. I'm quite looking forward to seeing this. So let's take a look at what's inside that box. 
just before we open the console up. I know the suspense is killing me, so please just bear with me because I think this is worth pointing out. So this is what the other consoles look like in the other countries. We got ourselves the European one there. I believe that was a Japanese one there, and that's the American one. I know this one's proved more popular, and I guess it's because this one comes with a turbo button. Uh, you can see it better there. These are the turbo buttons, and that's really important for shooters. I do understand that. And I guess the Americans weren't very happy with theirs because oh, look at the size of that. It's a beast. Fundamentally, it's the same console. It's just in different presentations. So I can see why the European was popular. I also am aware, and I've read online, that during the COVID crisis, that... Um, the Japanese and the American ones were delayed, whereas this one came out on time, so I know a lot of collectors imported this. Anyway, that's enough talking. It's time for your main event. Let's open it up and see what's inside the box. Ooh, the suspense is killing me here. So on that side, there's no little tab, but on this side, there is a tab, so I'm guessing the tab needs to be opened to get it out. Oh, look at it. Look at it mugging me off, not having none of that. Let's get this side open instead. Ugh, goodness me. I should really plan these before doing it because it makes me look like a right old weakling trying to open this. So, there we go. Box off. And let's see what's inside. I know you can see it. It's staring you dead in the eyes. We've got that filthy instruction manual. I bet it's uh, making you feel as uh, horrible as I am. Look at the size of that. Look how thick that is. In black and white as well. Who are they kidding? Let's have a look inside. Oh, loads of different languages. We don't need none of that. Quick look at the English one. Safety warnings. Don't eat the product. That's always good. Mm, maintenance. Don't you rip it out the wall. Got the layout. Here we go. Vents. Don't think they're probably necessary. I suppose it's all cosmetic. Here we go. HDMI port. Ooh, turbo button one. Turbo button two. Pretty good. What else we got? Uh, how to use. Plug it in. Plug the HDMI in. Plug the power in. <gasps> What's AC adapter sold separately? No plug? Oh, I suppose I'll let you get away with that because I know Nintendo did the same. Um, so I guess we're going to have to use either a port on the TV or get one of our um, USB plugs and plug them in. Toggle software list. Ooh, down at the bottom. Click. Turbo functions on fast, very fast. Oh, I love those descriptors. 720p, 480p, so no 1080p. Then the PCM as a sound output. Oh, that's way too much. I'm getting uh, weak in my old age, actually giving these instructions the time of day. I hope you respect that, though. That's dedication. That's dedication to you guys. Let's get to the goodness inside. First thing we can see is we've got a... Oh, I thought that was just the uh, USB port uh, cable. But no, it's actually the controller. So let's have a cheeky look at the controller here. Nice. It looks like it's got some serious length on it. I know the um, Nintendo, um, the NES, the length on the cable on the controller for that was absolutely disgusting. So you had to buy an extension cable. I'm a mug. I bought the extension cable. It made it way better. So take a look at the controller. Select run. <laughs> you know, how weird is that now? Because it's always select and start. It's so weird to see that. D-pad feels uh, okay. Quality of the plastic seems a bit cheap. But I guess that's probably a good representation of what it used to be. Nice click on the buttons, I respect that. Rubberize, start and select. And we've got, uh, ooh, text message. So we've got ourselves off, fast, and very fast. Yeah, toggle switches seem okay. Overall, yeah, the controller seems all right. Not too bad, not too bad at all. Now we're on to the USB uh, cable. Let's have a look at that one. So USB-A to, ooh, gross USB micro or micro usb as it's more commonly known uh length doesn't look too bad it doesn't look impressive either quality of the cable to be honest with you i've seen way worse feeling um usb cable so actually that's not too bad not too bad at all i was expecting it to be way worse this is definitely the bit we've all been waiting for let's take a look at the mini console itself nicely uh nicely packed up here let's uh get it out and have a look Ooh. Nice. So, decent plastic. It feels like a better quality plastic than the controller itself. These are obviously the vents that it was talking about. I guess that's where the um, cartridges used to slide in. On. <laughs> that's pretty cool, right? 
So when it's on, it shows red because it's on. But you see that little bit there? That's obviously what used to lock the cartridge in, so you can just pull it out. Pretty nice touch, nice touch. Two USBs, so obviously you can play two player. On the bottom, we've got ourselves Konami. We've got all the bits and bobs here. Screw so you can easily access it if you're the sort of person that likes ripping your console to pieces. And we got EXT Boost. So underneath there, obviously, whoa, I thought that'd be attached. Good job I didn't lose that. Uh, HDMI, a micro USB to plug it in. Um, let's get that back on. There we go. Okay, I don't want to bet I'm going to lose that. Any money, I'll lose that really quick. So, yeah, it feels pretty good. I like the size of it. It's only a little bit bigger than my hand. A nice mini console, unlike the Americans. My God, you see the size of that beast? <sighs> Unbelievable. Last but not least, I guess this must be the HDMI cable. Rather anticlimactic finish to the video. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, standard HDMI. Very, very basic. You know, it's cool that they included it. Am I going to use it? <sighs> Probably not. So that is the console unboxed. I guess, initial impressions, you know, it's unique, it's different. It feels a bit like the NES, but I guess that's the, uh, you know, the, the sign of the times. Um, but the proof is in the pudding. I've heard good things about it being plugged in. So I guess the only thing left to do is to plug it in, boot it up, and see what treasures are inside. Boom, cheeky edit, and we're back. So it's all plugged in, switched on. Immediately one complaint I have is visibly from the front of the console, and I don't think it's anywhere on the console, in fact, it's an indicator that the power's on. You know, I like a power indicator to know everything's all right, especially when you're having to plug it into a USB port, just to know you've got enough power going to it. I've got it plugged into my Xbox One X. It's powering it enough through the front, and we're greeted with the language screen. So let's go English. Whoa, I hope you can uh, hear that jazzy, funky music. Do, 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 do. Loving it, absolutely loving it. So let's have a look at the games that are on offer here. I won't read them out to you because you can read for yourself because we know reading is for prisoners. Power go. And interesting, there it is, Splatterhouse. Do, do, do. <laughs> Don't know, never heard of any of these. Bomber Van, Q3, oh, 93. I think it's definitely 93. Totally regret saying that out loud. So let's go down, let's turn to the PC engine. Nice! I like that little transition, that's pretty cheeky. So let's see what's on offer here. Going through. That looks familiar. I don't know why that looks familiar, but it does look familiar. Interesting. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Looks a bit like um, Dungeons and Dragons, is it? I'm loving that music. There's some serious light bass to it. I don't know if it's coming through on the uh, microphone, but yeah, pretty nice. There we go, Bomberman 94, pretty good. Bomberman Panic Bomber, never heard of that, but that looks good. Going through, oh, I like at the bottom, it seems to tell you how many players it is. That's also quite useful. And we're back to the beginning with Kung Fu. Nice, so let's have a look at what settings we've got here. User manual, Pfft. reading. Language again, display settings, okay, uh, all the different ones, that's pretty cool. So we've got the handhold version of it we want. CRT filter, that's not my sort of thing. Wallpaper, loads to choose from there. Menu design, oh uh, that's pretty cool. So if you didn't like the uh, cool graphics, you could swap to the PC engine, on. that's pretty good. Return, credits, no thanks, and we're back to the main menu. Nice. Okay, so it's time. Let's boot up one of these gems and give it a go. I think you <laughs> you all know what we're going to play. It's got to be Bomberman 94, so let's go. <laughs> nice. It's those little touches, I think, that, you know, make the console feel a little bit special. Boom. Hope you like the hue sync lights in the back. You know, what? Check out my old uh, my other video of that if you want to know more. Still using it every day. It's awesome. 
Right, too much. Let's get straight into it. Surely Bomb Man doesn't need a story. Uh, normal mode, battle game. Normal game. Let's get straight in. This does not look as I remember. Push run button. Of course I can. What is this? Dun, 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 dun. Kapow! This is pretty good. I'm enjoying what on earth. Right. Look at that bunny. What a noob. Kapow! Dun, 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 dun. This is. Bomber man, no idea what the power up is. Maybe it's a bigger bomb. Dun 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 dun. I presume I've just got to brap everybody. Ooh, even bigger. Goodbye, bunny. I'm absolutely loving the music. The music here is amazing. Rookie era noob. Kapow. Wonder what that is. I hope you're loving the music as much as me. Yeah, it's it's inspiring me. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, let's go collect whatever that is. Unbelievable! Whoa! 12 seconds to collect all the gimmicks. Go, 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 go. Didn't plan this very well. No! Ah, oh, robbed. Absolutely robbed. What is this? Oosh. He's got one piece of the pie. Two pieces of the pie. Let's go. Okay, right. I don't know for this night. How do we exit? Ah, we click run. So save, load. It's got a save stage, which is pretty good. Return to menu. Yes, please. <sighs> pretty good. I think we might have time for one more game, and it's going to be completely random, something I've never played before. So, what shall we play? I think let's turn to the turbo graph section. Click. Choose something from here. Bomb man night. Nah, no, only joking. Summit we've never played. Let's go for. It's like Wheel of Fortune. Let's go for military JJ and Jeff. It's got to be that. Look how happy those guys are. If only I could be that happy. <laughs> What is wrong with that guy right there? There's got to be something wrong with that guy. Click run. It's got to be Mr. Shades. Evies. Rodmat. Oh, too much reading, but I suppose at least it's in English. <laughs> I'll get right on that. Oh, we got that creepy guy following us as well. <laughs> See you later. Two lives. Let's go. Jump, jump, jump. Oh, ho, ho. that's a uh, traditional kick in the nuts, I suspect. Pow. Ooh, now who's laughing? He's like, he's sliding along. Look at that slip and slide. Look out! That is fairly impressive. Into the toilets. He's not. Whoa, my vitality went down because I kicked the toilet door open. Oh. So you go to the toilet to get your vitality back. Isn't that a life lesson for us all? Jump! Hoop! Oh my goodness. No! <laughs> Did you just see that? 
unbelievable. That <laughs> I'm I literally lost for words. Oh, oh. I was robbed then. What is that? Kapoo! So unless you can kick these to death, it ain't happening. Look at that little guy just hiding there. Oh, I thought it was his phone ringing. No. Oh, my vitality is constantly going. Like, what? I guess that means I'm dead. L literally, what was that about? Right, maybe a turbo run up. No! Come on, guys. Oh, that's unbelievable. <sighs> unbelievable! It's totally robbing me here. Right, one more go. Let's go. Can't go back. Must only go forward. Jump. <sighs> Nuts about caramel. <laughs> okay, what is going on with this game? If in the comments you know what's going on, and that bird just dropped trowel right there and there. So that was a thoroughly exciting uh, experience. So it's run and select to go to the menu. Shall I save my progress? No. Well, that has been quite an experience. So I'm gonna pause the video there, guys. I'm gonna give some serious time to this. I'm gonna to return to this probably in a few days after I've tried a few more games to give you my final opinions and give you my final review. Um, so for you guys, it'll be instantaneous because the video will start straight after I finish saying this. But for me, it'll be a few days. So I'll catch you in a few days. Boom, cheeky edit. I'm back. Like I said, I'd be back. Now I know there's an elephant in the room and you can see it right there. It's this cheeky little bag. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know I love cases for things. So I couldn't help but buy myself a brand new case for my core graphics. Um, so I looked on Amazon. There was nothing particular that was specifically for this. So instead, I decided to get myself just a generic mini console one. I ended up with the Orsley one. Now that was a bargain price. I think it was $9.99, next day delivery. It was actually a fraction of the price of other official mini cases uh, for the mini consoles. And um, yeah, I'm fairly impressed. So I thought I'd put this in the review, give you a quick, a quick little look at it. Um, it's generic for any mini console, so feel free. So that is a cheeky bonus, free for you, a Brucey bonus review in the middle of this review. So I like the material that the bag's made from. It's just generic sort of fabric, as opposed to you know some of that cheap stuff you often get from the you know the knockoff Chinese bags. Um, pretty good. Zip seems solid. I'll show you what I've done with mine. So in the front zip. I've got myself the HDMI cable, zip. Then it's got some Velcro on here, and it's got another zip. And inside the, that zip, I've got myself the shoulder strap. I'm not gonna be uh, using the shoulder strap. Um, cool kids don't use shoulder straps. Uh, you can quote me on that one if you like. And then inside, we've got ourselves where the console actually goes. We've got a little pocket up there. I've got the USB cable in there. It's got space for two controllers, as you can see, one, two. Here's this one in there. And then, of course, the console can fit nicely in there. It's a snug fit. It's, you know, it will slide side to side, obviously, because it is a generic console um, bag. So originally, I think it was for the Mega Drive Classic. But, you know, use your imagination. You can have it for all sorts of consoles. I like the way there's a zip there. Let's zip it up and it closes away the console so it's not going to go anywhere. But as well as that to secure it as well, we got ourselves a lovely bit of Velcro. Nice. On the back, nothing. On the sides, nothing. It's a pretty well made bag. And I can honestly say for $9.99, that is an absolute bargain. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. Highly recommended that you get one of those, no matter what your mini console is. If you don't want to play the disgusting, you know, £20 prices for Amazon and want a generic bag for any of your mini consoles, this is the one for you. I'd like to take the opportunity just to remind you guys that I always link my products down in the comments section below. So if you want to invest, it's always a quick link there for you. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. I'm not making any money out the links. Um, they just help save you having to search for them. I also forgot to mention one thing I do like about this. Being an ever so uh, patriotic person that I am, uh, it's designed in London. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean the you know doesn't necessarily mean it's been made in London. Um, but let's look at the box. The website's there if you want to check it out direct. But I got it from Amazon. We've got more information on there. Get social with us and subscribe. Um, and that's pretty much the box. Let's get it out of the way. 
leaves us with just these two. So I guess the last thing to do is just to sum up my final experiences, give it a review, give it a score, and go from there. In terms of the mini console itself, let's do the positives and of course the negatives. So the positives, um, playing this was actually like a breath of fresh air. I got to experience loads of different games I've never played before and they're all new experiences. I think, you know, given my age, um, I'm not going to tell how I am, um, I'm not that old, but I am old. Um, given my age, I've experienced a lot of the classics, especially with this culture of remaking games. You get to play them again and again and again. So it was really nice to play like a breadth of games that I've never experienced before. Um, on the flip side, the quality of some of those games are slightly questionable. There are some excellent ones on there, and there are some more games that I would say are a little bit frustrating, but what I will say is it does make you grateful for some of the modern conveniences in video games, like being able to have checkpoints for one. But I suppose you can use the save function in there, so you know I suppose that negates it. But overall, yeah, it's really, really good. I think the breadth of collection is excellent. Um, I do like the controller. There's something retro about it. Gives a very NES feel to it. One thing I do, and I'm, you know, I'm going to have to uh, deduct some points for here, is it only comes with one controller, and for me, that is simply not good enough. For the price of £100, I really think they should have, you know, Konami should have been a bit more generous and given us two controllers. I know that, you know, some mini consoles give you two, some only give you one. I think, though, however, for this high price, because this is pretty high considering. You know, you can get the mini consoles for cheaper than that, but I think most of them launched at less than £100. You know, they should have, you know, they should have included two controllers. Shame on you, Konami. Not that Konami's got a reputation for ripping people off, but who am I to say? One massive thing I absolutely have to talk about before putting a score on it is the soundtrack and the music that comes from this little box here. The menu sounds are absolutely fantastic. The music that's playing in the background of the menus are absolute bangers. I got a thorough enjoyment of just sitting in the menu listening to the music, playing the games overall. The majority of them had equally as good soundtracks. I think back to some of my experiences with some of the retro consoles and the retro games that I've played. You know, you can exclude the Mario's and the Zelda's with the classic soundtracks but you know the more generic games that you've never really heard of the soundtracks are naff and it takes away from the experience whereas a lot of the music that was coming for these were absolutely fantastic and almost made up for some of them being excessively difficult i don't know what some of you are thinking you think you need to get good well i'll get good when i got the time for it but i had sound some of them really really hard but the soundtrack really made it a pleasant experience uh you know i can't emphasize enough how much i enjoyed that and that's definitely helping with this rating that's going to come up next so you know how my reviews work we rate our reviews out of our cheeky five star rating so i know what's on your mind you're thinking ichiban what are you going to rate the pc engine core graphics mini well it's going to be four stars out of five stars so it's pretty good it's on the you know towards the great side of things uh, the only thing I can really deduct the point for is it only having one controller at that price point. For me, the price point is far too high for a one controller system. I understand their classics and there are a lot of games on there because there are a lot of these mini consoles that are really skimp on the games. I think this one's got 51 or 57. I did count, but I've completely forgot. I got all camera shy and my mind's gone, but there are a lot of games on there. So there's a lot of bang for your buck, but for me, the two controllers, because there's loads to two player games on there it's a bit annoying that i have to go and pay 20 quid for another controller which makes it 120 pounds now if you think about that in the grand scheme of things for 120 pounds what you can get you know it's quite significant so that is why i deducted one star the final question that absolutely must be answered is would i personally recommend this console well it's a yes and a no Yes, I would recommend it if you love retro classic games or if you've got an obsession with playing weird and wonderful games that you've never experienced. If you're looking for something brand new and something different, then yes, I would absolutely recommend this for you. On the flip side, I could also say that I don't recommend it and I don't recommend it based on the price. It is too expensive in my opinion. £100 for one controller I think is obscene. If this was £70, I would say, yeah, go for it. 
or if it was a hundred pounds and you got two controllers i'd say yeah it's probably worth pushing out the boat so i think ultimately it depends on it do you have that disposable income to spend on this if you do and you like classic games this is a must buy however if you're not flush with money or you're not a big fan of retro games or you don't like games that you've never played before because i know some people are like that some people like playing just games that they've experienced before that they're familiar with and i totally respect that so it's got its pros it's got its cons and i can recommend it and not recommend it at the same time and i know that's a pretty weird review but sometimes you know i'm always going to be honest with you i'm going to tell you exactly like it is so you can make up your own personal mind if you bought one of these i would absolutely love to hear what your opinions and your experiences of it is so please post in the comment section below hopefully i've answered all your questions if you're thinking about buying this but if you've got any more post them in the comment section below if you've got any comments in general about my videos or any questions you know please post them i always pride myself on getting back to people and trying to help them out and answer any questions they have regardless it means a lot to me that you're engaging with my content and the fact that you post a comment says that you care. Even better than that would be if you would give my video a big thumbs up because it means more people get exposed to my videos which really helps the channel out. If you absolutely hated it and you're an internet troll and you know what I'm going to say here. If you're going to thumbs it down, please post a comment to explain what you didn't like about my video. I'm learning. I love getting feedback from people. I'm trying to improve. I'm trying to get better every time. It is a personal project for me. Um, but hopefully, you know, I know that I've helped people with my videos and I'd love to continue to do this. And, you know, getting that little pat on the back every now and then saying the video was all right and seeing a thumbs up or just subscribing to my channel. It means the absolute world to me. Talking of subscribers, I want to say an absolute massive personal thank you from the bottom of my heart to absolutely everybody that subscribed to my channel. I've jumped up to 27 subscribers. That's a big increase over just a week. I am absolutely thrilled and it means the world to me to see that people are subscribing to my channel because they actually like the content I'm producing. It, oh, honestly, it means so much to me and I mean what I say if I meet any of you out in the real world and you subscribe to my channel you can go yo Ichiban you owe me a can of coke and I will march over to the nearest shop and I'll make sure it's chilled and I'll get you that can of coke because it just means so much to me to think that I went from absolutely nothing to so many people actually enjoying what I do massive thank you you know what I've got to say to finish off so Look after yourself, take care of the people around you, and most importantly, stay out of trouble.